to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just pray in one minute. Say, Lord, change me. Change me by the power of your spirit. The Bible says they grow from strength to strength. As many as appear in Zion, they grow from strength to strength. Something happens to them every time they appear in Zion. special number Say, when you insist in the spirit things no, no, change no, your life no, that we must see we really want to walk the paths of the ancient and Lord I pray in the name of Jesus that you grant us understanding the Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding to the simple we insist that we must be changed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah
Hallelujah. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a glass, says we are changed. Hallelujah. May we be changed tonight in Jesus' name. Hug 20 people. Tell them it's good to see you. Good evening. Be polite enough to greet them properly. Polite enough to your destiny helper, to your wife, some of you. You are hugging your wife. Be careful. Somebody is hugging her husband. Be careful. Don't misbehave. It can work for or against you. wife you can imagine the way the brothers behave just hallelujah god bless you please be seated no matter how fake you are you won't deceive our sisters in the mighty name of jesus and brothers you won't pray in tongues for nothing in jesus name ah I didn't know that it was this serious. Praise the Lord. Marriage is part of the blessings of the kingdom. Just behave and obey and you will get there. That's how it works. There's no other way. Praise God. There's no other way. Behave. Obey the word of God and be patient <laughs> be patient too i'm saying this one now let me stress it be patient hallelujah you're not running anywhere be patient thank you jesus financial dominion part three please let's get to work hallelujah some of you still have not gotten a notebook it's, it's not good it just shows how much you honor or dishonor what we are teaching. Please help somebody with a notebook. Use your phone, your notepad. Or don't ping. Hallelujah. We have a lot to cover today. I'll do my best to see that we finish early. The Lord help me in Jesus' name. All right, let's continue from where we stopped last week. Where did we stop? What is all this? You have the course curriculum. What did you write? Spiritual what? You see, this is how, this how some of you just fail exams anyhow. I said, where did we stop last week? It's all my saying, spiritual law, spiritual, we touch spiritual dimension, right? The anatomy of God's economic system. That's, that was the whole this thing. And then we looked at the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. We touched that now. Why God blesses us. Whether you take it seriously or not. One day you will need the message. Guaranteed if you will still be alive. Hallelujah. And then we looked at the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Hallelujah. We looked at the law of tithing. Remember? The law of seed time and harvest. We spoke about offerings, kingdom investments, first fruits. We stopped at prophet offering. You didn't listen to the tape. I listened to the tape almost two or three times, the MP3. We stopped exactly at prophet's offering, right? I'm trying to remember what I said. It's real, it exists. That's what I said. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Those of you who are just coming, um, Please try and catch up. Let's define financial dominion. At least that's what we are talking about. This is not just a campaign to raise careless money mongers who are just roaming around trying to be rich by all means. 
this is a bit to teach us the principles of the kingdom and guide us hallelujah into biblical principles of prosperity so what did we define financial dominion as the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects they create please if you are just coming catching up in this series god bless you just follow us carefully we are talking on financial dominion we started by looking at uh the concept of prosperity how that in the kingdom there are five levels hallelujah is that true or there are five areas where we measure true biblical prosperity what's number one spiritual prosperity number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health number four financial prosperity and number five relational prosperity god bless you so we said in the kingdom you are only prosperous if all these areas are at work are you getting my point although we are talking about financial prosperity every time you talk about prosperity in the kingdom think these five areas it's possible to excel in one area and fail in another we are trying to contend to see how god will help us so that we'll be effective in all these areas last week we talked very brief, briefly about um we consider the anatomy of god's economic system the inner workings how does this thing work and we looked at the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why god blesses us number one we said to live a comfortable life that's why god blesses us two to finance the cause of christ on the earth and i said it's god's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial resources for kingdom activities i know that there are kingdom financiers but everyone is supposed to be part of it number three is to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical and definite way hallelujah i told us that wealth in the kingdom is not an accomplishment is a trust never forget this hallelujah wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement is not an accomplishment it is a trust matthew 25 he gave he gave unto one five talents two and so on and so forth and then we looked at um the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance the first law was what the law of tithing also known as the law of open heavens uh, how that it is important for us to tithe your tithe is a tenth portion of what god gives you your increase it's not just some gimmicks by men of god to bring money out of people it's a spiritual principle leviticus 27 verse 30 malachi 3 verse 8 to 12 then we spoke about the law of seed time and harvest genesis 8 22 and then luke 6 33 i told you the law of seed time and harvest has nothing to do with money it's a spiritual principle that multiplies to you whatever you release hallelujah and then we spoke about different um givings or offerings or opportunities in the kingdom to practice the law of seed time and harvest the first is what offerings in the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 it is not good that we come to the house of god empty every time you are coming to the house of god make sure that it is predefined it is definite think well don't just come and squeeze out um bad money the house of god is not a filling station when you are coming think well plan between you and god hallelujah then we spoke about kingdom investments giving for the building of the house of the lord and for the work of the kingdom very very important we spoke about the concept of first fruit remember i please listen to that part of first fruit hallelujah the bible does not make it compulsory but it's an edge in the spirit that has lots of spiritual benefits hallelujah proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase verse 10 says so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats or thy presses to overflow so there are blessings that follow first fruits and then we spoke about prophet's offering does it exist is it in the bible we looked at two scriptures second kings chapter 8 from verse 8 to 9 and first samuel 9 uh, verse 3 to 13 
I told you prophet's offering is real. It works. The only thing is that prophet's offering in our day is another name for the law of honor. Just your way of honoring a vessel that God has blessed you with. And um, I told you that it's not appropriate as much as possible. Don't go to a man of God you're trusting for the grace of, his, of God upon his life to be imparted into your life. Don't just get up and go empty handed. Again, don't be under pressure to say, I don't have a gift so I cannot see a man of God, but I'm teaching you to practice it. It's a very powerful spiritual principle. As much as possible, I never see a man of God that is greater and higher than me empty handed. There must be something. Hallelujah. I dashed down home to see um, my father two days ago. And when I went there, I made sure that I packaged something and blessed him and blessed my mother. It's been the culture. Hallelujah. If you practice it, it has a reward. Honor your father and your mother. What's the reward? That your days may be long. Please, let me tell you something. Don't think that the Bible is just joking when you see these keys. These are very powerful, irrefutable keys in the kingdom. That means dishonor your father and your mother so that what will happen to your days. As simple as that. Period. As simple as that. Dishonor your father and your mother and then you shorten your days. But when you honor your father and your mother, it's tied to longevity. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. I was to talk on um, just one one more and then we'll look at the natural laws. There is the principle of seed faith. I need to teach on the principle of seed faith but I'm thinking of leaving it um, we'll use it to wrap up today's teaching. Right so let's continue. Vows and sacrifices spiritual laws of wealth and prosperity vows and sacrifices Psalm 50 verse 5 Psalm 50 verse 5. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 50 verse 5. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. Those that have made a covenant with me. How? by sacrifice vows and sacrifices are powerful powerful kingdom keys of activating the spiritual laws of giving what is a vow a vow is a commitment in the house of god that's just a simple word for it a commitment you commit yourself under god that you are going to give something for the house of God is still part of kingdom investments just an extension of it a vow hallelujah now I'm going to tell you the difference between a vow and a sacrifice they are not the same they are similar but a vow paying or remitting a vow may require sacrifice but not every sacrifice is a vow so I'm going to explain that a vow is a commitment A commitment to invest your resources in the advancement of God's kingdom specific um, a specific amount it could be anything not necessarily money you can vow to God there are people who pray and they tell God uh, let me give you an example of a vow remember the story of Anna uh, hallelujah remember that story Anna wanted a child and she made a vow. It was a commitment. It was a pact. You can call it a covenant. And she said, Lord, give me a son and I will give you a priest. Are you getting my point? So a vow is a commitment between you and God that you are going to do certain things in the house of God or to a servant of God or contribute in specific ways to advance the kingdom of God and the house of God. Do vows exist today? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. A vow can be a corporate agreement. A corporate agreement or just an individual desire or instruction from the Holy Spirit. What do I mean by a corporate agreement? We can all agree. There are churches, there are ministries that all agree. Maybe all the workers make this commitment. Um, one way to look at it is like, um, I don't want to use that word, dues. You know what dues are? Okay, look at dues from a spiritual perspective. That's a vow, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a bond upon yourself. You're going to say, Lord, this is what I am going to do in your house. And the Bible says every time you make that commitment, something happens between you and God. Now, um, I don't want to talk much. It's very clear, very straight to the point. But it is very important that when you make a vow, you are not coerced. This is, this is really the central point. Because I know that there are many people, there are ministries, for instance, that say um, we need 20 or 50 people to make a pledge of 1, 1 million naira. And some people just get very emotional because the message was so hot and then they come out. And everything in the kingdom is by faith. But it is important to make sure that you come out and make commitments that are realistic and redeemable. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that chase people up and down saying, what of the vow? You said you were going to give us the car. The man said, I changed my mind though. You know, I know that um, there are many in, in almost, I think most ministries, some at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, at some point in the ministry, they challenge the people to make very strong prophetic commitments, whether with their resources, with their homes, you know, all of that. All of that is called a vow. The danger of not fulfilling a vow is that you can bring judgment on yourself is that serious is that very serious there are lots of people that see the pastor and say pastor they just got emotional they say in one week time a vibut is coming i'm giving it to you and then eventually it doesn't come i remember there was a case like that years ago uh and and if you're a man of god here be very careful don't coerce people into making foolish vows. One man of God forced a phone, very beautiful phone, out of a lady's hands. Her, her boyfriend also bought the phone for her. It was not even up to one week. The man of God just saw the phone and he liked it. And um, when she told the boyfriend, she said, Well, when I say boyfriend, I don't mean you understand what I'm saying, right? Maybe let me use a very nice word. Please, what should I use? Fiance. Okay. That word, boyfriend. Sounds like a joker, right? So let's use a name that gives the guy a very serious. Now, when she told him, the guy now, when she told him that she gave the phone, he said... He will come and arrest the pastor if he doesn't give the lady back the phone. You know, and all kinds of things happened. And um, eventually, the pastor said the lady should bring the seed equivalent of the phone. You know, look, save yourself unnecessary embarrassment. Teach people the right thing and give them an opportunity to respond. Hallelujah. Never put pressure on people. Yes, it's true that ministries need financial resources. That's why we're teaching what we're teaching. Because a blessed congregation, a blessed people will produce a blessed assembly. Is that true? Hallelujah. So be careful when you make vows. Don't be emotional about it. But that does not mean you should not apply the law of faith. Hallelujah. There are times you can make commitments and challenge yourself. And... Um, redeem your vow sacrifices similar to vows but um, it's just your commitment in the house of God really every kind of giving is this kind of giving this sacrifice I'm talking about is the one that will cost you something very serious this is not just your normal giving um, first kings 
verse 3. First Kings 3, verse 3. Let's see something that Solomon did. I want to show you an example of a sacrifice. This is a commitment that challenges your faith. I'll talk more on it when I teach on the law of seed faith or the principle of seed faith. A kingdom sacrifice is not just um, your giving. In sacrifice, convenience is out of the way. That's why most sacrifices, um, biblically now, right? A sacrifice is usually a product of either an instruction from the Holy Spirit or a deep revelation from the word. Hallelujah. Something must compel you to do something unusual. I'll talk more about that. And Solomon loved the Lord. So that was the revelation behind his giving. Are you getting my point now? He didn't just give because he was a king. Walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed burnt offerings in high places. Verse, verse what now? Alright, continue. Verse 4. Or let's go to verse 5. Very quickly. Did I say five? Four. Four. So that we see what he did. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was a great high place. How many offerings did he sacrifice? A thousand burnt offerings. Now imagine, just replace all the human beings here and just imagine they are animals. Right? Imagine the pool of blood that was flowing all around that was a sacrifice 1000 1000 what a waste right that's an example of a sacrifice the woman who came and broke her alabaster box at the feet of jesus the bible says it was worth a whole year's wage costly nerd these were spices that were very very um they were what we we'll call colognes in our day today very expensive cologne and the Bible didn't say she just put a hole and poured small and left the rest. The Bible says she broke everything, including the jar. Hallelujah. If it does not cost you something serious, it's not sacrifice. It can be giving, it can be this. Solomon said, I will not give God what will not cost me something. There are many of us who have never made a sacrifice for the kingdom in our life. And it's not just about giving. It's a culture. I'm not just talking of seeds. The sacrifice of your time. The sacrifice of your resources. Hallelujah. It says, gather my saints unto me. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That means every time you do something that costs you in the house of God. It's like entering a covenant with God and God is committed to keeping his own part. Hallelujah. A sacrifice is no ordinary giving. It's giving plus. Giving that costs you something. Hallelujah. That's why it is born out of a revelation. The offering you give, you give, most of us give out of our convenience. Hallelujah. But when you bring something that costs you I mean something that you know that a part of you goes with it. That's a sacrifice. And you don't just do it because you are coerced. I told you that two things govern sacrifice. One, a deep revelation from God's word. And the other, an instruction. I can be teaching like this and the Holy Spirit can give you an instruction. I remember a lady one time. Um, we always give people an opportunity to sow and give and all of that. But... I'm not the kind of man of God that will tell you, sew your shoe, remove your wivon, drop it in the offering basket, remove your this and that. Um, we consider that not to be necessary. But I remember one time, one lady just dropped a very expensive phone. And I was so touched. I said, Lord, I don't want trouble. And we looked for the lady and we told her, please, I want to pray for you and give you back your phone. And she said, no, the Lord instructed me. You see that? For many of you, when the whole thing would have gone down, you'd have said, truly, oh, thank you, sir. You're a very good man of God. Hallelujah. Vows exist. Sacrifices exist. And it is very, very powerful. Let's leave it there. 
I'll talk about the law of seed faith. I want to I don't want to talk about it now. If I'm to expand I will have to enter the law of seed faith. But I want us to round up with it tonight. The natural laws of wealth and prosperity. Please listen carefully. We've discussed the spiritual laws. As you look at these things, I want you to see the areas where you have not been practicing it. Right? Both the spiritual laws, mindsets, paradigms that need to shift and make sure you make quality adjustments. Natural laws of wealth and prosperity. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about the concept of money. Please write the concept of money. What is money? Really? We're talking about financial prosperity now. What is money? I'm tempted to ask the treasurer to bring some money for me. But, um,. If you can't listen tonight, just endure it. You're not going to see any money. Some of you like money too much. Too much. Just seeing it, even if you don't touch it, just makes you happy. You don't know what to do with yourself. The concept of money. All right, all right, please, let's get to work. What is money? Money is not the paper you hold. Please, treasurer, help me. Let's just do it. Please give me money, treasurer. Treasurer, oh, anything for the boys? Proverbs 18, verse 16. Let's read. One, two, read. One more time. All right, replace a man with your name. Ready? One to read. Aha, I know how to get you people to participate. Ah! Some of you are calling all the names so that no part of the name will be missing. It. One more time. May that be your testimony in the Ah! Okay. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. This is the finance department. I have no business with. Love not the world. Not the things that are in this world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not. Hallelujah. People have died for this. Right? This thing is running away from others and is running towards others. Tonight, what you will learn will make it come your direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Right? The concept of money. Now, look at me. Do you know that 100, is it 100 million or 100 billion of Zimbabwe money just buys one egg? Yeah. All of this in Zimbabwe, if it's a Zimbabwe currency, I don't know how far their inflation has gone, but it can buy just one egg or a cup of tea. So you can be a broke billionaire. Are you getting my point? I want to redefine your mindset. Let's understand we're looking at the natural law because for many of us, this is what we believe to be money, right? This is what we have been taught to be money. Because when you walk, this is what they give you. Is that true? They give you this and then you can use this to buy this and that in the market. Now, but um, I want us to look back at a few hundred years ago when there was no paper. Hallelujah. What was their money? Huh? What do you mean cowries? let me teach you keep quiet praise God 
Now, please listen. If we do not understand the biblical concept of money, you will be misled. Are you getting my point? Please, please, you need to get this. I want everybody here to be rich and prosperous and no devil will stop you in Jesus' name. So listen carefully. Now, when the world was in what we call an agrarian age, agriculture predominantly, are you getting my point now? They used what we call the barter system. Have you heard about that? Or you were sleeping when they were teaching you in primary school? Trade by barter. Where I carry my goat. Right? And then you bring your bag of maize. And I give you a goat. And you give me. So will you call that bag of maize money? Or will you call that goat money? Are you getting my point? Let's trace it and see where we are coming from. So you bring a goat and then I bring a bag of rice or something and then we exchange. That was how um, people carried out all kinds of transactions. But eventually a few things happened because number one, it was not easily divisible. You see that? You don't need to write it. This is... Um, What's now economics? You know that you have an idea. Some of you don't know. If you don't know, write. Don't just say I know. If you don't know, write it. Humble yourself and just say, I'm just hearing it for the first time. Right. Hallelujah. Number two was portability. If you had oil, for instance, will you carry one drum of oil on your head and be walking around looking for who has something? Number three, I may have something you want, but you may not have what I need in exchange for it. Are you getting my point? So all these factors began to create a need um, to find something that will fit the definition of what we know today to be money. From there, people went into cowries and gold. I'm just fast forwarding very quickly. Gold and silver and all of that. They tried to make um, coins, gold coins, shekels of silver. You see them in the Bible. So they sold Joseph. They gave Joseph and then they gave the people how many shekels? 30 shekels and all of that. Same thing Judas did for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now eventually they brought the concept of what we call paper. The paper currency or paper notes. Um, please listen. Let me bless you right now. The original revelation behind, I want to carry new ones. The original revelation behind this was supposed to be a receipt for the money you have. Are you getting my point? What today you call money was originally devised so that it becomes a receipt. Come, Sam, let me explain that to you. Um, Ah, I can't use a human being now. I turned and I saw a very pretty lady. I said, no way. I wanted to use her as a commodity. But, back to sender. Give me this guitar. Can you remove it and just give it to me? You must understand in Jesus' name. Right, hold this. Now, imagine Sam walking around with this guitar. Are you getting my point now? He is going everywhere with it. Are you getting my point? Now, this 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 is not portable are you getting my point now in uh, explanation now and he cannot be carrying this to go around with you so we devised a way of measuring what the worth of this guitar is right so let's assume is how much um we give it a value based on a reference and let's call it four thousand so i now say sam drop this guitar drop the guitar now I want to show you how flawed the economy of the world is. And hold this. This is 4,000. So this becomes an evidence that you have real guitar lying down somewhere. Are you getting me now? This paper that you're holding is a receipt for something real. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means every time you hold this, it is a sign that there is something real that you have more true and more real are you getting my point but i don't apply for economics some of you are looking at me if you've not applied for for jam 
Don't try it at all. Praise God. This is basic economics. Now, the world system had a universal backing called gold. Everybody say gold. Are you getting my point now? So gold was the reference, right? So every time they gave you 4,000, or how much is this? 5,000. What they are trying to say is that this is a receipt for having real gold worth 5,000. Are you getting my point? Now, gradually, the Illuminati and the rest and so on and so forth just divorced this from gold. So that you are now holding this but it is not backing, it's not being backed up by anything. Let me give you a proof. Set fire on this now. How will you claim it back? Are you getting my point now? Set fire. Just, we won't do it. Ah, God will punish us. We won't do it. But set fire on this right now. Do you know if you set fire now, who will you take to court? Are you getting my point now? So, there can be one billion of this. And if fire catches it, it, has, it doesn't have any value. There is nothing that is backing it. Are you getting my point now? So, if your concept of prosperity is having this, then you are not rich. Some of you are saying, I don't agree. Let me share half this one. I know some of you, you are saying all these things you are talking in stories. So, let me have this one first. This is what people want. Listen, I want to explain to you why someone was called a rich fool in the Bible. Do you know why they call him a rich fool? He was not called a fool because he was rich. I will tell you why. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Sam. So what then is money? Right, please. Money is simply a means or a way to exchange or reward value. Money is a reward for value. And then you can add or perceived value. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Money is simply a reward. Or what you get in exchange for value. And there's a reason why I said perceived value. If I'm a false prophet, for instance, let me show you what perceived value is. If I'm a false prophet and I come and I say, Annie, you are going to be blessed. Package 10,000. You have now rewarded me for honoring what you call perceived value. This is not real value. Are you getting my point now? I will show you why many men of God are rich. They don't even know why they are rich. They think they are just rich because they are tithing alone. No. No one gets rich for doing nothing. Only armed robbers. You see why armed robbery is bad? When, we ex when I explain to you the concept of value, you will see that if you are getting money for doing nothing, you are a thief. Praise God. Please write. Did I define money? What did I say it is? Okay, let's give the two definitions. Many of you have mixed all kinds of things. Let's just give you two definitions. Number one, money is a means of exchange of value. A means of exchange of value. Number two, money is a reward for adding value. We're going to be dwelling around this one word that has changed the life of millions. And may it change someone's life tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I did a little teaching on that when I was talking to the final year people. Write this word down. Value. V-A-L-U-E. When medical students come into the medical school, oftentimes they take them to see a cadaver. I don't know if they still do it. And they ask them to salute the cadaver because their knowledge about medicine will be dependent on the sacrifice of that cadaver. Write this word down, value. Because the blessings that will come upon your life will be dependent on that one word. Please don't joke with it. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Have you written it? Value. Value simply means your ability to solve problems and provide solutions. Please listen to me. These are irrefutable keys. These are irrefutable keys. If you catch what I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time. What is value? The ability to solve problems and provide or prefer solutions. Value also means your worth. A sum total of your worth. We play around these two definitions. I'm so happy seeing everybody writing. This is a school. You must write. It's not just about shouting. This is a very serious school. So you write and learn, understand what it is. That's why I gave us the course curriculum before we started. Thank you, Jesus. So value talks about your ability to what? Solve problems. Are you getting me? Now, when dealing with the natural laws of prosperity, everything about our discussion will hinge on this word value. What it is that you can provide. What it is that you have that God has given you. Are you getting my point now? That you can give humanity and you can receive rewards for. This, these are irrefutable keys of prosperity. Many people in church teach on tithing and giving. We touched on that, right? But for many prosperity teachings, they just stop there. And say, everybody rise up and package a seed. But the truth is that if that is all that is taught the body of Christ, that theology will only make pastors rich. Are you getting me now? Value. Everybody say value. What I can give that will be paid for. What I can offer that will bring rewards for me. Forget about total prosperity if you claim you do not have something to offer let me tell you something every time god wants to bless you after practicing these kingdom laws he will always place a demand on something you have everybody say i have something say it i have something in second kings 4 when they came and met the woman Remember the story of the woman, the wife of the prophet who died. And they were about taking the children. When she ran to the prophet and said, help me, what did he tell her? He said, what do you have? Great men are men who have something. They know what they have and they've mastered the art of packaging their value. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? When Peter and John came to the man at gate, beautiful, the Bible says they told him, look on us. And the man looking, expecting to receive something. That means he expected that they had something to give. Is that true? And they said, silver and gold we do not have. I think it was the workers or final yes, uh, people now or heads of department that I was teaching them that in this life there is what you have and there is what you do not have. Is that true? When you find what you have, you develop and deploy it. When you find what you do not have, you learn how to receive it. And there are two ways to receive. Number one is by what? Knowledge and impartation. These are the two ways of receiving things in the kingdom. Through knowledge and through impartation. Is someone following me please? Hallelujah. Value. He said, silver and gold have I known. That means I acknowledge that there are some things I do not have. He said, but such as I have, you can only give such as you have. At what point in his life did he know that he had that? Are you following me now? Elisha told um, the king, he said, let Gehazi come to me. Let Gehazi come to me that he will know 
that there is what? A prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. Are you following me, please? Say value. Say it again, value. Now, let's read Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Just leave her quietly. I hope she's okay. Did she faint on? Oh, she's under the anointing. She fainted. Okay, carry her. Welfare department. What made her faint? She's sick. Mm, that's why we've been teaching. Please, people know what to do. Let's, let's concentrate. We pray for her and it doesn't work. Take her to the hospital. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Proverbs 18. Now, everywhere you see gift, replace it by the word value. Are you ready to read now? One to read. A man's value does what? A man's value. That means when you have something to offer, when you have the ability to solve problems and profess solutions, the Bible says it can make room. It didn't say it to show you where the room is. It can make room and do what? Bring you before great men. Natural laws of prosperity. You must understand that those who are blessed financially in this kingdom, listen to me, those who are blessed financially in this kingdom are men and women who have something to offer. Everybody say, I have something to offer. Now, when we talk of value, whether it is spiritual value, whatever it is, let me tell you why men of God are rich and they do not even know. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm offering value to you. Is that true? I am solving a problem. I'm preferring solutions. I'm offering spiritual value. Now, it is a law in the kingdom. Every time you add value, whether you sell it or give it for free, you must be rewarded. That's how the law works. I've given somebody a big revelation. Every time value is released, whether you give it for free or you sell it, you are compelled to receive a reward. Whether you give it for free or you sell it, you're not paying me for what I'm giving, but I am conscious that there is a law. That's why I give my best. Are you getting my point now? Because according to God's law, according to the law that he has put, that is natural does not mean it does not come from God. Is consistent with kingdom principles. Are you getting my point now? Every single time you add value, reward comes to you. Question. That means the reason why you have not been rewarded is because you have not recognized or developed your value enough for somebody to pay for it. Is that true? Hallelujah. Are you understanding the concept of value? The ability to solve problems. Many people want something for nothing. Nigerians like something for nothing. We want dash. We want a wolf. We want all kinds of free things. But let me tell you something. In the school of prosperity, there must be something that you can give in exchange for money. Hallelujah. So the question I have for everyone listening to me is what do you have in your house? It could be a gift. It could be an anointing. It could be a skill from your training or it could be a talent. There are four things that connote value. Either what you are anointed, you are gifted, you are skilled or you are trained for. Do you know that there is an anointing upon your life? That you can add value to the world. This is why it is not right for believers to remain poor. If you understand the concept of value. You have something that a rich man needs. Are you getting my point now? You have something that a poor man needs. Because of that value you have. When it is 
packaged and deployed properly, it will bring you rewards, finance. Hallelujah. Do you know, for instance, if I package my teachings now and turn it into a book, is that value? Is that value? I mean, all that I've been teaching, if I package, at least I know among all of them, even if it's just one, it will be a bestseller. Is that true? Now, what happens? It be, because I have now, I'm adding value. I'm supplying spiritual information to mankind in certain aspects of life. They will be compelled to pay for it. Is someone understanding? You can have a room that is empty. No man comes there. The day you start adding value in that room, people start coming. Listen, please. Listen. I want to tell you something very powerful and I pray it will change your life. You do not look for money. Money is attracted. Get this. Never forget it. There are people who, have you heard that statement? I'm looking for money. Stop looking. It doesn't work that way. You don't look for money. Money is attracted by obeying certain definite laws. Hallelujah. Our parents have had this mindset. Oh, I'm looking for money. Let me look for money. Where is it? Hallelujah. You don't just look for money. There are things you do that bring financial resources to you. Are you understanding what I'm teaching? Stop trying to look for money. Because sincerely speaking, it is not missing. It is only waiting for something that it can come in exchange for. Welfare. Do you still sell Zobo? Huh? You, they've not started. How many of you know that because they are not offering any value to you now, you will carry your, your 10 naira or 100 naira and go home with it. But the moment they put yogurt there or Zobo, what happens? They have now packaged value. After praying and shouting, you are thirsty. Correct? And you are compelled to bring this out and you will give them and they will give you something in exchange. Stop trying to look for free money. It doesn't exist. There is always something you have. And the degree of value you offer is the degree to which financial resources come to you. Please, I want you to understand this. I'm teaching you the fundamental principle a very powerful natural law that commands prosperity. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I have something. Very quickly, let's do a workshop for two minutes. Write a list of things you know you have that if you train, God can use it to honor you. Write it quickly. Please, everybody. Leadership skills, write it. An extremely pretty face, Queen Esther, write it. Oratory, write it. I don't just mean noise making and ability to talk anyhow. Oratory, write it. Please write it. You think God has given you an anointing. There's nothing to feel. You are not being arrogant. This is a workshop. Everybody participate. Write it. There are things I know I have. If I say I don't have them, it's a lie. I don't have everything, but Kai, there are some things I have. There are some things you have. Write it. For the first time, be sincere with yourself and say, I'm fine. What is there? Let me just say it. Write it. And say, I'm brilliant. I have leadership skills. Write it. Please look at what you're writing. Don't just, we're very serious. Don't just write something that you can't show somebody else. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. There is something you have. Hallelujah. This ability to teach is value that I can add. Is that true? I go for ministrations and I don't sell the anointing. No, I don't do that. But every time I go for ministrations, what happens? 
for standing to teach the people of God and bless them. They package what they call honorarium and then there are people who are individually blessed in the meeting and they come with envelopes and say, sir, we want to bless you. We want to honor you. What that means is the more you develop yourself, you are attracting wealth to yourself. That means you, prayer is capital. The Holy Ghost is capital. When you become anointed, if you lay hands on a sick body and is healed, you are not selling the anointing. But trust me, if it is notable enough, men will come and pay you for it. You have a prophetic dimension. I mean, look at all, all kinds of prophets, whether fake or real. is a business that is selling anyhow in Nigeria. Now, I know that there are, there are genuine servants called of God. Hallelujah. Do you think if a man comes to prophesy in your life and tells you the truth and it happens and you are blessed, no matter how greedy you are, you will be too grateful not to forget the person. You will come and say, sir, or papa or daddy or whatever, this is, this is a blessing from God. Brothers and sisters, the secret to conquering inferiority is to have something the world cannot reject you for. They may criticize you, but there is this treasure in earthen vessels. I can never be intimidated in my life. Never. I can be challenged. But to be intimidated is to mock God. He has tried for me. Everybody say, I have something. Say one more time, I have something. Yes, there are some of you that have an anointing. The anointing God has given you, if you respect it and you honor it, it can bring bread to your table. But many of us are playing around and doing all kinds of things you do not know that everything God gives you is value and you can give that value I told you it's a law see listen if you understand this and you are a worker in church you will not just work to be paid because whether you are paid or not it is a law you can't change it every time value is offered what happens finance Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know that if a woman comes here and she's selling pure water right now, will she make money? Everybody answer me, will she make money? But if she doesn't sell, will she be sitting at her house and money will come? Value. 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 Every time you master the art and the ability of adding value, you increase. There is something you have. Everybody say, I have something. Say it, I have something. Some of you, what you have is uncommon leadership abilities. Uncommon leadership abilities. You have uncommon leadership abilities. Beyond imagination. You are extraordinary leaders. But you cannot develop yourself. Because you think it cannot bless you. We are still talking about the concept of value. The Bible says, Proverbs 18 verse 16, the gift. I told you to replace that word with what? Value. The value of any man can make room. I'm telling you, those can be shortened over others. How many of you have seen people who, maybe those with sirens, and they tell you there's no place to pass. But the moment they are coming, they tell you people who are begging, you know, shift and then they open the place and say sir and he just passes and they say like we're saying there's no space you just saw that there was space it's just that you have not become notable enough the day you become notable that door will open is someone getting what i'm saying the african culture has cheated us by making us believe that we do not have anything say i have something there is something you have that the world can celebrate you for. I'm telling you, there is something you have. I walk with this consciousness. There is an anointing that I have. If you don't have anything, you have experience. And you can package that experience in a book. And people will come to glean from your wisdom. If you don't have success, you have enough failures to advise people. You have something at every time. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm teaching you right now. I'm adding spiritual values. Are you seeing why men of God are rich? They are not just rich because they were called of God. Are you getting my point? Many men of God do not understand the full dynamics of why they are prosperous. So, they design a prosperity message such that for you to be prosperous, you must become a man of God. Question. If God has not called you to the fivefold ministry, how do you become rich? Are you, are you following me now? Say in the name of Jesus, I reject poverty. Say it in the name of Jesus. I reject poverty. I reject lack. There is something I have that the world will pay for. There is something I have that can open doors for me. Say it one more time in the name of Jesus. I refuse to feel inferior. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to feel like a nobody. There is an ability in me. There is wisdom in me that I can exchange for financial resources. When you understand this, when you understand this, you will know that if you remain poor in this life, it's not God's fault. Are you getting my point now? There is something that you have. Oh, hallelujah, I have something. Can we pray just in one minute while you're seated? I want you to just bless the Lord and say, I have something. No devil will deceive me. I have something. He may not show now. You may be an abject failure right now from the perspective of men. But I tell you, there's this treasure. Kabata labakata. There is an anointing on your life that can compel nations to bow. Opportunity has not been given yet, but it does not mean it's there. That prophetic gift can feed nations and reward you. That entrepreneurial spirit can bless you. Your beauty can bring food on your table without compromising kingdom values. There is something you have your course the course that you are reading or you've read can bring food on your table is value everything that constitutes an advantage please pray one minute there is something i have jesus he may not speak today but it will speak he may not speak today but it will speak nations may not see it today men may mock you as you are developing it but it has capacity to make you a, a city that is on a hill that cannot be hidden gender notwithstanding your background notwithstanding your limitations notwithstanding hallelujah say I have something Stop thinking you are the helpless ones waiting for people to help you. It's what we got from colonialism. Are you getting my point now? That's the mindset. Listen. Read Matthew Ashimo Law's book, Black and Blessed. He led a powerful revolution that almost caused him um, trouble in Europe. He let people know that it's not a cause to be black. The color of your skin has nothing to do with your destiny. Are you getting my point now? They brought the spirit of servitude to Africa and they made people look like if you are not a white man, you are destined to be a slave. Your job is to serve. And this is the same mindset, let me tell you the truth, that is in our educational system. From 100 level, you're already thinking, who will give me a job? Oh, I'm reading this and that. I'm reading this course. It's not marketable. Some of our parents have put pressure on us you must read medicine whether you like it or not it is lucrative now don't blame them they are only doing the best with the revelation they have but let me tell you something brothers and sisters the gift of a man can make room for him are you getting my point now the gift of a man i was watching one of benny Hinn's videos and he was going to a crusade and the president of the nation together with the entourage they were waiting for him at the airport as soon as he landed these presidents and these people are not born again oh they are not born again but there is value that is going to add to that nation hallelujah 
you will add value in this Nigeria, they will change your passport to a diplomatic passport. No more begging for visa. It becomes a privilege to move around. Yes. Hallelujah. There is something that can make anybody Christian, Muslim, atheist, they can't deny your presence. There is something that would be, there are men of God, there are all classes of men of God. Fine, ugly, it does not make any difference as far as the needs of men are, are available. Is that true? No matter how ugly I look, if you need healing, you will look at my face again. You will look at something I have. And you must honor me, I will come and sit down. Because you won't keep me at the back. There is something I carry. Everybody say, there's something I carry. Oh yes, there is something you carry. There is something you carry that you can give in exchange. The devil has perverted it. But after tithing, giving, there are some of our mothers here. You may be looking at yourself and you are, you are thinking you are old. You are not old enough to release your... I mean, you are not beyond the age to release your value and be blessed. I'm going to be teaching us all these things. But I want to press on this issue of value. Every time you go somewhere, I'd like you to see what they do not have that you have. That becomes your entrance into that place. Are you getting my point now? There are places I go to, nobody knows me, I just sit down quietly. Five, ten minutes, someone is looking at me. Are you not Joshua Selman, the gift of a man? And while they are riding, I say, Lord, it's not my fault. I, it's not my fault. When you called me, I said yes. Value. There are some of you, God has given you unusual ability. You can write. Your works are speaking. One lecturer just looked at you and told you all kinds of nonsense. And said I'm the best student in this faculty. And nobody will come. Let me tell you. Anybody that thinks you will not become anything. You will shock them in this life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes you cannot speak English well. But there is something you can do that does not need English. In China they refuse to learn English on purpose. Because they believe they will take charge of the world. And everybody must learn Chinese whether he likes it or not. Right now you turn your deep freezer upside down. And you are punishing yourself trying to read what they wrote. Because they are offering something you must buy. Everybody say value. You can choose it. Produce something and write it in your language. Write it in tongues. Write it whatever. And force the world to read it. Hallelujah. Mention everyone who is truly wealthy and I can tell you the value they are adding to the world. Mention one arm robber and there is no value they are adding. Huh? When you talk of Bill Gates, he has changed the world because of what he's offering. Zuckerberg, mention all of them. Don't dream of just becoming rich by putting little dots of oil and draw a cross on your head. This is, let me tell you, it can bring favor, but you will lack the resources to maintain and multiply it at that level. Everybody say there's something I have. Don't think business. I'm not talking of business. I'm talking of something. We've not spoken about all those things. I'm talking of something that you have. Hallelujah. This lady fainted now. This is not, I don't know if she fainted or fell under the anointing. Whatever happened, it has, listen, until there is a problem, you are unnecessary. Says Dr. Mike Mudok. Until there is a problem, one of my greatest mentors on wisdom, that guy is a bank of wisdom. One minute with him, he tears you into pieces with the wisdom. He has mastered the art of wisdom hallelujah until there is a problem you are what unnecessary as simple as that if you don't need revelation Joshua Selman is unnecessary except if I have something else to offer to you if you if you want to sing if you want good music come Sam if you want good music you are not going to invite me nobody it is I can't remember the last time anybody invited me to their church to come and sing have I not been singing answer me have I not been singing why 
why is it that when you, are, you put it there, word minister, don't confuse us. We are bringing you because of that aspect. Is that true? I was a music director. I've said it many times. Has he made you invite me to come and teach the choir? Because I have not developed myself enough. Hallelujah. This is what is bringing bread for somebody. Play something, Mike. Increase the volume and just play anything. Change the voice and play something that will glorify Jesus Christ. Really, listen, listen. I want to show you the excellency of value. You remain inferior and you keep criticizing people and dying in silence until something in you brings you out of that realm. Look at people who are always criticizing. They, they have not discovered something that they have to give. So every time they look at somebody, what are they trying to show us? Rise and become colleagues in that realm where there are very few people. Leave those struggling down and rise up. Play mic. Anything. Everybody say value. value. This can be side one. As simple as that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Powerful moments of worship. You think it won't sell? Answer me. If you wake up with this and this is charging your spirit. This is, hold on. Many people say he's just ministering. The tape they are going to package, is it free? Value. Value. Sam, you will sing. I always like doing this work. for time's sake. We'll just have one. Sing any song you like, anything at all. And you will know the difference between him and me. You will know that it's not as if God is unjust. Are you getting my point? I will lift my voice. And I will sing, I will sing holy, I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King, I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will raise the voice. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was near. Hallelujah, I will sing before the strong forever. Hallelujah, listen. That takes us to the next principle we are talking about. Everybody write competence. Write it down, competence. I will show you why some people will die broke. Doesn't matter how much they are, whether they pray for 100 years their spirits will be electrified but as far as finance is concerned mm -hmm. trust me hallelujah everybody write competence I want to make you hate average right now and I pray for the grace to do it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ look up everybody I sing right why will you prefer Sam to me is it that I cannot sing the song? Leave the boy. He's listening to this financial. Oh, okay, he's following his mother. Are you following me now? Everybody, why since I sing and Sam sings too, what is the difference between two of us? Please be honest. 
not just value we all have value what's the difference the degree to which we have developed that value is that true is that true look at me tonight i want you to be very sincere for the first time for some of you stop lying to yourself the bible says don't esteem yourself more than is meat there are many of you claiming you are competent over some things you are not competent about and you are wondering why are doors not opening for me because you have not pressed enough there is a level of extraordinary competence you enter it's a realm of rest there is no competition there hallelujah if i'm to sing with sam right now i will just leverage on the anointing of the holy spirit on my life i'll just say lord forget about the voice praise the lord say i refuse poverty competence look up do you know that competence attracts all kinds of people and resources to your life what is competence leadership excellence the ability to surpass ordinary standards extremely accurate mastery there's a song they call music of the masters men who have mastered the art of not making mistakes they have demonstrated in this realm that it is possible so when you watch them play they are not trying to look for where Kiji and you know they are just laughing and enjoying the groove listen brothers and sisters when you imbibe the law of competence in everything you do whether i'm not you you notice now i've not mentioned any word business whether in ministry there are ministers who they love god but they don't study scripture they don't know that they tell you genesis 1 verse 1 and and quote nonsense and they won't go back to listen to themselves and correct themselves see let me tell you something there is one man that challenges me bishop Oedeko. he doesn't just quote the regular verses he will fish out one verse he will say something that may not make sense and pull out a scripture and then say it it was from him that i learned that it is good for a, a man to do what remember that our scripture what is it again to bear his yoke in his youth competence you want to be a man of god let me tell you if all you think makes ministry is falling under the anointing you will throw people down till the day there's nobody again in your parish or in your church let me tell you listen listen you must build yourself there are aspects of your life that you must be diligent i'm not talking of everything what is that one thing that you know that i'm good in this one God is my witness whom I serve with my conscience. He can take me anywhere. Many of you are average, average in many things. You say I'm, I'm multi-talented. None of them has brought food on your table. You are multi-talented over little average things. Why don't you strive for competence? The Bible says, if a man desires mastery, he is not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are aspects of my life i've told myself and i've made a covenant with myself and vowed before god that i will be so competent god is speaking to someone right now hallelujah it's, it's true that you have something but that something is not enough to take you anywhere and everywhere you go the door closes behind you stop begging it's a sign to go back build yourself and just stand you are a city on a hill the bible says you cannot be hidden there are ministers carrying complimentary cards all around i'm i'm a prophet if you invite me i promise you you will see the hand of god in your ministry my brother if you find yourself marketing yourself it's a sign you are not prepared proverbs 31 31 and let her works speak for her at the gates you don't speak for your works hallelujah there are people with all kinds of complimentary cards they have offices with ac they have 
two or three screens there's no value there's no competence they can't do anything and this is the deceit you find around everybody just comes and says okay i am this i am that very fine table nice jeep parked outside there is nothing to offer i'm challenging you right now if you believe god is going to use your degree and you believe that your degree is one of the tools you will use what is wrong with stretching it to the extra mile go for your masters get a masters and be confident so that they stop shutting the door at you hallelujah let me tell you something it's, it's my natural disposition i dislike lazy people if you are around me it's impossible to be lazy i'll just send you away people sleeping for hours without any work to account for why they are sleeping for that long hallelujah let me i'm challenging you many youths in nigeria are lazy they are just hustlers so it looks like they are hard working hustling is not the same as smart work hustling is just to be hitting left right and center anywhere i know one door will open no you don't make it that way there is something you have for somebody somebody can say this is the rod of god in my hands and you're going to say lord i will carry this rod that's what people like frank edwards did is that true they took this keyboard and the voice that god gave them and they said lord i'm taking it and right now look at comedians in nigeria 2.5 million these guys go these guys go to london and collect 30 pounds per seat nigerians just to make you laugh and now you may think that they don't know what they are doing they are not clowns try to make people laugh and see if it's easy for people to laugh do you know how frustrated you become when you give series of jokes and the people are looking at you so don't think you know it's easy to look at them and feel these guys are just lousy boys either because of their hair or this you don't know what books they've read and and the way this is and i'm i'm going to say this if you are a gospel artist here stand up gospel artist if you are not sure just quietly remain seated I'm, I, I don't intend to embarrass you but honestly be confident if you know you are a gospel artist a worshiper okay whatever stand up i'm serious i'm serious whether inside or outside please stand up let me challenge you this night because you must prosper you can hate me now but you thank me tomorrow now how many of you can show me three people three people whose works mentor you and build you according to the area you see god taking you let me see your hands don't lie don't lie correct are you seeing now this is a measure of your desire for competence there is no reason why we should invite somebody from koinonia here who would do what we're already doing there is no reason hallelujah i'm challenging you your voice your gift can make room for you you don't need to market yourself you need no nonsense complimentary card what you need is gift with proof that can deliver oedeko said the end of every argument is proof Mukhtar is the person who who dry cleans my 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 suits and my shirt. i've not i've not had the desire even while he was serving he comes to do it because he has done it so well when people like you they will give all kinds of excuses about you no matter what people say about you it's only a matter of time it will pass and they will focus on what they have to get from you hallelujah how many of you rehearse worshipers i'm challenging you how many of you get up in the morning some of you are music directors in your churches you know that what you are producing in that church is nothing to write home about but there's nothing to challenge you see if you live around local champions who clap for you even when you are wrong you will be broke in life there are some of us that come you sing nonsense and somebody comes to tell you wow jesus and you are saying really 
tell yourself the truth i can get there but i'm not there yet don't see sam and say we are colleagues you are not colleagues make yourself a protege this equality nonsense is killing the body of christ we are equal in christ we are not equal in value are you getting me now so challenge yourself this is what i tell the worship team all the time hallelujah this is what I, I challenge the leaders if there is nobody there are some of us we hate challenges we want everybody telling you it's all right in the school of prosperity it does not work like that the bible says provoke one another unto godliness i'm challenging you some of you have beautiful voices potentially you are sitting here and then there are some of you you're already looking for exposure you only rest on the seventh day if you are trying to rest now you are deceiving yourself at my level right now if i try to rest and i say i've gotten it in ministry is the height of self-deception i can't say god has not tried for me but there are heights there are people who have gone ahead of us and they have shown us possibilities that exist in christ and we must press i don't hang around psychophants i hate liars i'm not saying don't be around people who bless you and encourage you but i am teaching you there is a way you can tame poverty competence everybody say competence please sit down god bless you those of you who believe god is calling you to be entrepreneurs i don't just mean you like business you really believe there is an aspect of your life like that stand up let's see them I assume that you are standing up intentionally without any kind of coercion you know what you are doing let me tell I really want to challenge you tonight because I love you listen if you cannot show me two to three people at least whose books whose lives whose videos are mentoring you and building you I'm telling you straight to the point you are not following the right path are you getting my point now who is challenging you who is challenging you you want to become a public speaker you can't speak well it has not been a source of concern you are saying it does not matter that's the rod of god on your hand does it take 10 years to learn english can't you go and subscribe for extra moral english see this is the problem many people think if you do not humble yourself you will die of poverty there are times you need to go and learn please don't feel offended i'm not just lashing you out of hatred i love you from the depths of my heart i hope you understand i just want to i want to provoke you to know that there is a way to the top and that that thing does not come by dash we've spoken about the spiritual laws but brothers and sisters you can be so competent you can be the very best people pack auditoriums when people like zig ziglar are going to speak they pray hundreds of thousands of dollars nigeria brought les brown and they paid so much money to hear a man come and speak for two hours what is it about talking hallelujah please sit down show me the project you are currently doing in your life show me the book where you are currently writing something you are working on and i know that you are already on your way out of poverty i don't care if you are taking gary right now but show me the flamboyancy you are doing fine lady handsome guy and i show you a big deceit that will cost you so much in life there are many people claiming what they are not Listen, brothers and sisters, this is the school of prosperity. It's time to settle down. The minimum standard in the world today is excellence. That's the minimum standard. Whether spiritually or otherwise. That's why we pray. By the grace of God, we have a robust prayer team. And everybody has that spirit of excellence. But there are things I do every day. And where I don't, I cannot do it. I always try to catch up and make up my spiritual life i build myself in leadership i build myself in entrepreneurship you must build yourself in these areas
challenge yourself tonight i will be competent i receive grace this is your exit out of your present state god is speaking to someone tonight this is your exit out of your present state if you've been suffering complex and inferiority if you're always feeling offended when you see others is because you have not seen the rod of god in your hands there is something you can hold that can part the red sea for you let me tell you something there is something you do not go and stand before the red sea without nothing what do you have that can part that river for you hallelujah The value of a man makes room for him. I read a book years ago by John Mason called The Enemy, called Average. And I challenged myself that I was never going to live an average life. Please listen to me. This could be an understanding that will exit you out of poverty forever. I call it intentional prosperity. Prosperity that you entered intentionally. You know what you did that brought you. It was not magic. When it comes to prosperity, it's not just about miracles. It's about principles that can be reproduced again and again and again. This becomes the basis of your confidence. Is God changing somebody tonight? The place is quiet tonight. God is speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. Write this word down, please. In your journey to prosperity there are three major things you will need to develop aside from all of these things number one or three levels of knowledge you must acquire what I call financial intelligence part of what I'm giving you is financial intelligence please write financial intelligence number two you need financial planning intelligence is good but it's not enough financial planning number three you need financial discipline today i'm going to announce a few books i've read a lot of books but there are a few that i truly believe you don't need to read everything but there are a few books that can help you what is financial intelligence The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works is called financial intelligence. You need financial intelligence. The educational system in Nigeria does not have a structure that provides adequate financial intelligence. For instance, I redefined money for you. I told you a number of things, how that money responds to value. All of these informations culminate in what we call financial intelligence. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence also helps you to develop what we call in business an investor mentality, not a consumer mentality financial intelligence many christians in the body of christ have money but they do not have financial intelligence they don't know how money works there are many churches that the men of god are anointed and god is blessing them but because they lack financial intelligence they do not know what to do i look forward to times when we will not have to talk about this again because everyone will be blessed we can now concentrate on other aspects of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Financial pursuit is not supposed to be a lifetime pursuit. It's a cause when it becomes a lifetime pursuit. What that means is that from your birth to the day you die, you live your entire life looking for money you never found. Some of our parents are 70 years right now some 80 years ask them what they are still doing they tell you they are looking for money my bible tells me except the lord builds a house it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain the bible says it is vain 
to wake up early in the morning nigerians and sleep late in the night what's the reward only to eat the bread of sorrow the bible says but he gives unto his beloved sleep hallelujah financial intelligence helps you to understand that every time money enters your hand i've, I've explained it part of it is for god part of it is for you and part of it is your is for your future please write it down every money that enters your hand is divided into three one part for god one part for your consumption right now another part for your future if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow now you'll be naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow now you will die hungry tomorrow so write it this is financial intelligence understanding all the information that helps money to stay in your hands every time money comes into your hands just know please look up everybody put this as a golden rule in your life from today every major money that comes into your life know that the tithe belongs to the lord and any other kingdom investment part of it belongs for you today your expenditures and then investment for your tomorrow you cannot forget about your tomorrow you cannot walk into a future you are not prepared for some of our parents are crying and dying right now when they were when they were young land you would sell land maybe 250 naira in our today's money their colleagues were buying it there they were eating and drinking beer and and doing all kinds of things going to the market square and causing trouble now they are 50 years 60 years let me tell you something this life i want to teach you a powerful lesson this life is divided into four major phases this is a digression but let me help you understand if you understand this you will wake up right now and you will know that time waits for no one everybody right your life is divided into four phases there is the morning phase of your life there is the afternoon phase of your life there is the evening phase of your life and there is the night phase of your life the first 25 years of your life constitute the morning phase of your life the second 25 years of your life constitutes the afternoon phase of your life. God is challenging somebody. God is whipping childishness out of somebody with this word. The, the third 25 years from 51 to what now? 75 constitutes the evening phase of your life. Everything afterwards constitutes the night phase. Please look up and let me explain to you. The Bible says, so teach us to number our days that we may appear lie our heart unto wisdom listen it is expected by god that at the maximum of 25 years let me challenge you koinonia that at 25 years some things should have happened in your life are you getting my point at 25 you should be born again you should have known the lord you should have been filled with the holy spirit and you would have understood the principles of the kingdom that means if you are after or over 25 you are you have entered the second season of your life already and that means you must catch up listen please god is speaking to somebody there's too much childishness in the body of christ and we must kick it out by letting everyone know that what when you were mentioning future yesterday today was part of that future now that today has come that gentleman that came to give his testimony a bishop was reminding me i remember when he came post ume to imagine that he's rounded up service today i almost cannot believe it but that's the brevity of time many of you can still remember the day you carried your iron box and you were entering your secondary school look at you today don't ever let the devil make you feel there is time have you heard that word some of you may be 16 19 20 30 you're saying there is once you are 25 years old that's the learning phase of your life that's the time of your life you can make mistakes and go scot-free are you getting my point after that time some things begin to cost you listen 
I'm teaching you this thing because some of us never had this opportunity. Are you getting my point now? Some of you just got old. How old are you? 34, 35. Are you born again? No. Feel the Holy Spirit? No. What do you know about life? Nothing. The second phase of your life, listen, is the phase where you begin to make quality investment for your destiny. Where you begin to put to use what you have learned in the first 25 years of your life. Now, if you catch up, it's an advantage. 25 years. Maximum of 25. Once you are at 25 and some... God is speaking to you because many of us here are over 25. You're just looking, playing around, smiling around. Somebody who is 15 years is playing. You are joining to play with the person. You are 10 years um, behind schedule. The lady is sleeping around, doing every kind of thing. You two are 25, sleeping around, believing that I will get husband one day. Ladies, listen, let me challenge you this night. Whether you believe it or not, ladies, hear me. I want to talk to you right now. And I want to talk to you from the depths of my heart. Listen to me. A day will come in your life when the men around your age group would have been married. Are you getting my point? That means the earlier you become a virtuous lady and position yourself, the better. I'm not scaring you. I'm only telling you the truth. Hallelujah. At age 40, the probability to hear God to make any marital decision is almost zero. Is that true? There are some of us who just live carelessly. Honestly, I'm preaching from the depths of my heart. God is telling somebody, wake up. You have all kinds of roles of boyfriends and people around. One for Monday, one for Tuesday. Continue. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You are sowing. You will enter the next phase of your life and turn back and say, why is my life like this? And God says, it's in my law. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Hallelujah. Many of you who are a lot younger, you have a big opportunity. Stop saying I'm a child. In Nigeria, what's the age for adulthood? 18 years, right? Many people are more than 18 years. So what makes you think? And there are two words that have made the youth in Nigeria. It has cheated the youth in Nigeria. One is adolescence. Two is young adults. Kick those words out of your life. If you are, if you are an adult, you are an adult. You are sleeping around and calling yourself a child. They say, I, I'm adolescent. What does that mean? So you can play around. Let me tell you, stop dreaming. If you are an adult, an adult is one who is not a child. Simple. Financial dominion. There are sisters playing around with their opportunities, playing around with the youthfulness of their lives. I'm not saying just jump around and say yes to anybody, but what are you doing? You are not positioning yourself. You are there gossiping about people. Just You have 20 toasters. Keep watching. Keep watching as the toasters marry. And you'll find out at a point that it will be Ichabod, the glory. It's, it's not that God calls you. That's how life works. And brothers, don't think I will not come to you. Because there are many of you. Let me tell you something. You should have no business looking at any lady if you have not looked at your life. Any lady that passes around, you are just laughing. Can, can we be friends? I, let's just go out. What to wear? To wear. Time is going. The morning face of your life is going. I'm challenging you in this place. There are some, it's as if you will die. Who is with you? Many brothers, you can't see a sister pass. She's fine. So walk quickly. Walk quickly. Don't let any brother just come to you. Somebody whose destiny is confused. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Just comes around and twisting his tongue around you. I, I think um, we, should, we should get along. Along where?
there are all kinds of relationships that don't make sense relationships like occultism like secret society the people are moving no vision they are not going anywhere they know they are not going to get married they, they never talk about their future they are always playing around playing games do you know the hurtful thing sister let me encourage you that brother can dump you and ask another lady out the next day but you it can't be like that for you It's time to be serious. It's time to be serious. Tell yourself, wake up. Tell yourself, wake up. The Bible says, Arise thou that sleepeth, and Christ shall give thee light. Financial intelligence. How did I get into relationship? Hallelujah. The second is financial planning. So financial intelligence talks of all the knowledge and the information. I was talking about four phases of our lives. Morning phase, the learning state. Afternoon phase, the investment state. Between 25 to 50 years, according to the word of God and according to the principles of God, that's the time for you to have built a house. That's the time for you to have raised and trained your children. Are you getting my point? That's the time for you to have done certain structural things around your life. The evening stage of your life is the time of resting and legacy. That's when you should be resting. That's the time you should turn back and start writing books. Have a foundation that is blessing and building others. There are many of our parents, 70 years, they are struggling, even fighting with us. The land is my own. The son says, Shall I paid you 10 years ago? I, say, I can't remember. And it shouldn't be. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Wake up. There are some of us here. The truth is God has been faithful. Some of our parents have trusted us with lots of money, lots of things. We are there playing around, doing all kinds of things. Tonight, I'm not condemning you. But I'm saying for the first time, brother, can you just tell my, yourself, where am I going? The Bible says, when the prodigal son came to himself, nobody conducted deliverance. You can come to yourself. And tonight, God is asking somebody to come to himself. Tell yourself, wake up. Say it, wake up. So financial planning. It's often said that he who fails to plan has planned to fail. You must know how to plan your resources. Plan your resources. Hallelujah. Plan your resources. Structure your life. There's still one more session, the session of wealth creation. I'm going to teach you. When I teach you on streams of income, the secret to oceanic wealth, um, investment mentality, three to five year plan for wealth, we'll, we'll round up with that one. Hallelujah. <sighs> Financial planning has to do with the execution of your ideas, the execution of your knowledge. You don't just get up and start doing business or get up and just get a job. What do you want in your life? Look at me. Let me just give you a bit of the theory of financial planning. Right. How much do you think you will need for consistent cash flow per month? Please don't write anything that doesn't make sense. Something very reasonable. How much do you think? How much do you know? I'm not Forget about your job or what you are doing. How much cash flow do you think you will require to be effective? This is financial planning. And then you bring together a summation of all your assets and liabilities. What are your expenditures? What are your expenditures? Expenditures are the things that take money from you. Assets are the things that bring money to you. If your liabilities are greater than your assets, you are going to be broke. There's no question about that. Next week is miracle service. But oh, by the way, let me just ship it in here. Next week we are meeting at Charity and Faith. Please take note: the miracle service will be taking place at Charity and Faith. Please write it and don't forget. Let's not have people coming here. Charity and Faith, five thirty. 
liabilities are the things that take money from you so if you are buying perfume you are buying a nice cloth that's liability what asset is replenishing the resource that liabilities are taking are you getting me so it's a game of asset and liabilities wealthy people always have more assets than liabilities I don't want to go ahead of myself next week I will be talking or after the last series will be the first week of March we'll talk about the rich and the poor what is the difference between them and then a few things will wrap up that series right I will come back I will revisit these things again financial planning very important you must know how to plan your finances I'll teach you when we come back to this I'll teach you the principles of budgeting. Many of us don't know how to budget. You spend as it comes. 10,000, you blow it. 50,000, you blow it. 5,000, we do not understand. And it's not our fault. You must know how to budget. Look at me. If Sam has 10,000 naira, all right? And you come to Sam and you say, please, I want to drink ice cream. And Sam says, sorry, I don't have money for ice cream. It doesn't mean he doesn't have money. It's that within his budget, he has structured his money such that there is no room for ice cream. Are you getting my point? When you budget, you will know how to save. You will know how to build your life. One of our sisters in this place, I remember she came and met me. She had been saving years ago and she met me early this year. And she said, I want to buy a plot of land and I looked at her I said what tiny lady like you have you I hope of course you can't say she stole money but she had been practicing some of these principles and right now she went and bought land this is a young lady she's not just waiting and hoping for one man to come and say I married you I paid your dowry keep quiet at her age So I will teach you principles of budget. That's all about financial planning. To know how to plan your life. You can't just do it. There are many ways you can help yourself to plan finances. Every time money comes, I've taught you. Part of it is for God. Part of it is for you. Part of it is for your future. You must develop a futuristic investment mentality. You can't just spend and eat everything. You are going to build one day. You're going to build one day. You're going to, if you don't have land, you are broke. I don't care how much you have. Kings in ancient times were rich because of two things. Land and people. Land and people. Land, all the cattle and everything, they were together with the land. That's why land is called real estate. When I teach you on wealth creation, I'm going to teach you the trinity of wealth. Hallelujah. We talked about the secret to oceanic wealth. We'll talk about all of that. Multiple streams of income. I don't want to go into it. The last phase is financial discipline. After making all those planning, it takes discipline. Everybody say financial discipline. There are so many people. January, they, wrote, they, they write a lot of things. I want to do this. I want to do that. But they don't end up doing it. Maybe your goal this year is to say, I want to save 50,000. Or hundred thousand, and you are saying that based on the ten ten thousand that is coming for you every month, and you made up all fifteen thousand that you will live just within the range. See, let me tell you something. Um, we'll still do that wealth creation, but let me just say it there is what they call in the business world the 70 30 principle. Please write it the 70 30 principle. What that means is that. Out of the 100% of your money that comes, 10% is for God and 20% is for savings towards investment. The remaining 70% is your own. Whatever 70% of your income cannot give you, you are not yet ready for it. Are you getting me now? So you can have 100,000. For instance, if 100,000 comes, how much is your tithe? How much will you save now? 20,000. So you are saving 20,000. Open an account that the branch is not in Zaria. It's one way of helping yourself. Destroy your ATM. Break it into pieces. It's one way of helping yourself.
Hallelujah. Everybody say discipline. By and large, at the end of every planning is discipline that separates men from boys. Anybody can say, I will do this. Discipline is the ability to stay on course. The ability to abide by your principles. You must be disciplined. It's very tempting. You just enter a boutique and you see a very nice dress. And you feel like buying it maybe because they are giving discount. And you look at 70% of your money. You budgeted it and you found out that there is no space. You can't just say, let me quickly touch from that one. You see, that's indiscipline. May God bless our mothers. I said it during Kingdom Well Summit. Women are better savers than men. True or false? Yeah, it's true. It's very true. It's very true. You can see a woman, she can be collecting a salary of 20,000, but she can be saving 2 2 or 4 4,000. And a man who is collecting 100,000 will come and be begging her, and she can bring some money out. She won't keep it in the bank. She can keep it in, women keep money in all kinds of places. But at least it works. Women spend and spend and spend. I'm very bad in saving. I don't waste money, but I, I give to a fault, I believe. So because of that one now, I am very bad in saving. Praise God. And so I had to create a system and a structure to help me. You must understand yourself and plan and be disciplined. Some of you right now, you came out to pay your tithe. And the sincere truth is, they sent some money for you. This is end of the month. Some of you next month, they are going to send something. Some of you, your salaries are coming in. Begin to save. If you are married, agree with your wife. Tell her, honey, let's, we, are, we are going to plan our future. Let me tell you something. At the end of this series, I'm going to give you a five-year plan. Hallelujah. Within five years, if you follow this plan, there is nothing on earth that will stop you from being a millionaire. Five years, realistically. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. The principle of seed faith. Please give me 10 minutes and we'll be done. I must teach you on this. The principle of seed faith. Or a robot is believed to be the man who opened the body of Christ to the revelation behind what we call the principle of seed faith. And I must teach you, please listen, I'm about to share with you a very powerful key. There are not many times I tell you I'm about to share something deep. I want you to believe it. This principle has been abused, but there is a balance. First Corinthians 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. sorry 2nd Corinthians did I say first 2nd Corinthians 9 let's see the principle of seed faith what is it verse 5 but this I say then because of time we'll just go straight thank you thank you this I say then. But that's verse 6. I'm sorry. 6. God attaches giving. He, he, he correlates giving to sowing. Are you getting my point? The art of giving. He likens it to a farmer. Please let's read. I'm about to show you something. But this I say. He that soweth sparingly shall also reap what? 
So he's talking about sowing. Sowing, is that true? And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also. Next verse. Now he says, Every man according to his purpose, according as he has proposed in his heart. So let him, so giving his sowing. Are you getting my point now? That's the revelation. He shows us the relationship that when you give, you are actually doing what? Sowing. He said, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So he talks about a sower as a giver. The first revelation of seed faith is that every giving is sowing. Let me explain the law of the seed for you. Please write it. The law of the seed is part of the principle of seed faith. Everything is created from a seed. Everything is created from the seed. A man puts a seed into a woman. She gives him a baby. Is that true? The structure of the kingdom. Every time Jesus speaks about the kingdom. He says the kingdom of God is likened unto a seed. A farmer went to sow. So everything in the kingdom operates based on seed. Write it. Seed harvest. See, just draw a line. Seed harvest. That means every harvest you want to see in your life. I'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now. You must understand the law of a seed. That your harvest, according to Genesis 8.22 and 2 Corinthians 4, is dependent on your seed. That means when you see that there is any harvest you desire, find the seed that can produce that harvest. Honor is the is the seed for what access thank you i taught you this already so every time you want access and doors are closing what is the seed you want a harvest of honor when god wanted a family he gave his seed jesus christ he sowed jesus christ in the earth and he brought many sons into glory are you getting my point now so this is a very consistent principle The gift of a man is the seed for greatness, the seed for prosperity. Tithe is the seed for open heavens. Prayer and fasting are the seeds for revival. Nothing is going to change it. People can teach all kinds of garbages and theory. Prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Prayer is also the seed that produces the harvest of breakthrough among other things is any man afflicted james 5 13 let him pray hallelujah the baptism in the holy ghost is the seed for walking in the spirit and the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit so you see that every time you desire a harvest i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now every time you desire a harvest find out what seed dr mike mudok said whatever you have not gotten is because you do not yet know how to receive it is someone getting blessed now the principle of seed faith look look at me everybody the principle of seed faith works on this revelation sowing something i have by faith in expectation of something that i do not have that i believe god will give me are you getting the point now sowing something i want something and that i can lay down a seed as a symbol of my faith that's why it's called seed faith are you getting my point now that you can lay down something connecting it to something you are trusting God to do this is the summary of the principle of seed faith does it work absolutely it has a place in the kingdom it is a powerful principle I have seen in my own life hallelujah I touched a bit on it the law of honor commanding results the principle of seed faith 
is that you connect with a seed a desire that you have something that you desire god to bring to pass in your own life you can use a seed to tap the grace of god upon a man's life you can use a seed to connect dimensions and anointings it is very possible you can tap you can use the principle of seed faith how many of you believe it it is a principle you begin to practice so if somebody buys a car or you want to get married pastor williams is married bishop is married shade is married you package a seed and say man of god i'm trusting god please hear this it's not just a desire a seed can provoke certain things to happen in your life are you getting my point it has happened in my life i live in this reality the powerful thing about seed let's connect it with that teaching on sacrifice now is that in practicing the principle of seed faith the lord himself tells you what to lay down attaching your faith to it for something you desire i cannot count how many times god has asked me to empty my account into ministries and into the lives of people and all of that connecting to certain things when i see a man of god that carries a grace that i desire i don't just come and kneel down and say please lay hands on me i activate the law of seed faith and i say with this seed it works i told you last week when jacob when isaac wanted to bless his sons he said go and make me what venison bring a seed that will provoke something in my life please listen don't think this is a gimmick to bring money out of your life there are certain levels in this life that it will take seed faith to connect you into you can enter cheaply into certain dimensions as a ministry god has helped us to enter some dimensions cheaply by the operation of the law of seed faith i remember one of my pastor friends he went into a city he was starting a church and the church was not opening up and he called me and i laughed i said my brother stop struggling just get a pen and paper let me teach you how to cause a city to open if you want to plant a church when you enter the city find the largest church in that place and package a seed there is something that makes people to come there whether you believe in them or not is irrelevant the people are not idiots you cannot criticize the largest church in a city and expect your church to walk in that dimension it does not just happen so you sow the seed of honor and you get a reward back for it i repented from criticizing men of god years ago when one elderly woman called me and said my son don't ever talk about any man of god again i said mommy I repent this day in the presence of God and you. My mouth is sealed. I can only attack wrong doctrines, attack nonsense, but I'm not going to mention any. If I ever mention the name of a man of God, it's because I'm saying something right. Are you getting my point now? You can never criticize Bishop Stan and want his anointing to come. It just doesn't happen. Are you getting my point? Honor is not just money honor is not just money you hold people in in true genuine esteem in your heart and then what is in them flows to you you can provoke certain dimensions with a seed listen to me god is speaking to someone every time you ask god for a new level he will give you an instruction there is something you must lay down to go up you must lay down isaac to go up i know that a lot of people have deceived the church they have manipulated things but it does not mean that it's not there there are some of us who have been praying about certain realms and certain dimensions i remember when ora roberts was almost dying there was a time he was almost dying it was apparent that he was going to die he called his wife and he said honey how much do we have in the account and she told him he said go and sew everything quickly he said do you love me he said yes yeah. she was trying to complain he said go and sew everything quickly do you know as soon as they dropped that seed 
all of a sudden he started resuscitating and he stayed many more years your seed can connect you to graces doors anointings dimensions in the spirit please i want you to believe me there are people today i know that they carry certain things that god has put in my life in very evident ways Oyedepo came to Dunamis and he was talking about Enensha. He said that when you see my son, you see that he carries certain things evidently, correctly. I want you to know that your seed is one of the greatest miracles that can happen to you. It can end a season in your life and open up another season. We tried this this year as a ministry. I told the treasurer, package every collection in our koinonia service and we went to sow it. Goodness, goodness, goodness. The results have been fearful. God did something today that touched me in a very personal way. Hallelujah. Somebody sent a very humbling seed into the ministry today hallelujah i want you to believe this i want you to believe you must not pay for everything in life if you understand the principle of seed faith i was sharing i think with the head of protocol every time i see people with vehicles and all of the rest i tell them sow it sow it sow it i went to just two days ago on getting to my house i saw a vehicle parked somebody bought a car for me and dropped it there true story two days ago somebody bought a car and dropped it i just left it there and i just quietly came back i have seen this thing work in my life every time what you have is not enough for a harvest it is a seed if you are afraid to lay it down, you can never rise to another level. Listen, God is speaking to many of us here. There are instructions that many of us are afraid. Money never leaves you. That is why money never comes to you. If you conquer greed in your life, you will rise to certain levels of grace. I'm teaching you these irrefutable principles of prosperity. Hallelujah. I remember a time when Kenneth Cope, um, David Oyedeko carried a seed and took it to his mother. He bought shares for her and a table with his first salary. And she looked at him and she prophesied upon him. She said, you shall be great. I never go home without a seed to honor my parents. Never, never, never. Impossible. Even if I'm dying of hunger, I know that that is what will get me out of where I am many of you do not believe in this principle i'm challenging you you can sow your way out of your present level into a level beyond your imagination i will never forget when i carried singlet i carried singlet and i packaged it and i blessed somebody pastor singlet started coming i didn't know what to do with it yeah i'm not exaggerating hallelujah there are so many gifts that people give me today I don't need. I don't know what to do with it, but it cannot stop coming because I know how to make it happen. Whatever is not in your life, you do not know how to receive. You must challenge yourself this night. Greed will keep you in poverty forever. The law of seed faith works. I've seen it break open doors for people. I'll never forget one woman who came to me she was barren and honestly the, the normal thing is just to pray cast out that spirit of barrenness but the lord said that she should go to her pastor and sow a seed and she said man of god i confirm this the lord has been speaking to me about this and she carried that seed do you know she dropped that seed it was not up to two weeks two weeks two weeks he didn't even pray for her who is god speaking to tonight could it be that the answer to the next level of your life is hidden in your seed hallelujah we are going to pray and i want to challenge you there are many of you as you pray god is going to give you dangerous instructions 
That's why I said we we'll take the principle of seed faith at the end of this service. Please make no, I love you too much to rob you of one naira. I love you too much not to tell you the truth. There are people that God is speaking to you right now. God is speaking to you and is telling you that this is the secret to enter the next level. You have been admiring people. You are seeing people rise to those levels. But you think it just happens by dash. It's not about wishing. There is a law. The Bible says as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. I want to challenge you. We are going to pray. I want everybody before we pray, just take one minute and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, what instruction are you giving me? What seed do I need to lay down to rise to a level? Please, if you do not believe what I'm sharing, don't worry. Don't worry. God is talking to many people right here. There is something you have in your hand. He said, what do you have in your house? Hear me. Many of you, this is what will break some chains in your family. This is what will break some cycles of poverty. Some of you, this is the seed that can make you graduate. This is the seed that can make your supervisor listen to you. If you don't believe what I'm saying, no problem. No problem. But I have seen in my life, I have seen God coming in fearful ways in my life. I will never forget when we were preparing for massacre crusade. There was nothing. We were broke to the core. It was the principle of seed faith that blessed and honored us. It was one man of God. I sent recharge card of one five to his phone. One man of God. I sent that seed. And almost every day, almost every day, from the day we took a seed and we sowed it in Canaan land, there is almost no day that nobody is sowing in this, that somebody does not sow into this ministry. Whether in cash, whether in kind, somebody needs to sow this seed for their marriage. I'm speaking to you, this is not coercion. God is going to give, I'm not going to give you any instruction, bring any money, I'm not. God is speaking to you. Mandala you just talk with God for one minute and I'm going to lead us to pray. Somebody's miracle is long overdue. Jesus, speak to us. Open your heart and hear your maker speak. There is always something you must do you will remain at that level forever until you know how to provoke your way out or a robot touch the body of christ this has been abused but hear me koinonia may the lord god of heaven judge me if i stand before the people of god and mislead them seed faith will take you out of certain seasons will take you out of certain seasons you don't need to know how the miracle will happen you can provoke your way you can provoke your way there are people here the lord is speaking to you the lord is speaking to you there are sacrifices that you are going to make i don't pity you at all i rejoice with you i made this sacrifice i told you years ago I'll never forget when I carried everything that I had my bag my whole belonging and I took it for a prosperity convention home and abroad I dropped it and the Lord told me from this day you have entered wealth we are going to pray if you cannot give up what you have at your present level you don't deserve to move to a higher one I'm giving you a key in the spirit rise up please hallelujah hallelujah i want to challenge everybody please bring out a seed bring out something i'm willing to help a few people if you do not have i can help you honestly 
It's not about money, brothers and sisters. Any, come. A few people can can take two more people. Hallelujah. There's still one more person. I want you to connect. Okay, sorry. Come, come. Hallelujah. Please, instrumentalists, please play. There are two ways to bind Satan. By prayers and by knowledge. I have seen the principle of seed faith work in my life. I've seen God change situations in very fearful ways for my family. My mother did something in my life. I was studying all the things she did that brought breakthrough in her, in, her, in her business. And I found out that there was something my mother did. It was casual until the day the Lord revealed to me. My mother took out time and prepared chicken. This chicken, you know, she prepared it for me, not just as her son, but as a man of God. And it opened her. Every time I go to greet them at home, before I come, she has prepared it. That is her own seed, my blood mother, to tap into the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. When I went home, my father was going to the airport. I ran. I said, I must pay for the luggages. I must pay. I insisted. I must pay for the luggages. What have you not seen in your life that you desire? I want you to hold this seed. We are going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, for many of us, God is giving you instructions even beyond today. I'm not talking about Project 10,000. Project 10,000 is, 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 is something in the house. But God is speaking to specific people right now. And I want you to pray. Please begin to pray in tongues. And say, Lord, this is it. I'm tired of where I am. I'm tired of where I am, oh God. Please pray passionately. As though you understand what you are doing. Inside or outside. Some of you are face to face with destiny right now. Don't let greed kill you. God is speaking to somebody. You can rise to this level. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides alone. But if it dies, if it dies, if it dies, what can you give up to go up? God is speaking to someone. What can you give up to go up? My altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. My praise is calling you, oh God. My honor is calling you. Now, I like you to begin to pray and say, Lord, I tie this challenge in my life to this seed. I believe it. Please pray. I tie this terminal disease. It is not the money that brings the miracle, it's the sacrifice that is tied to your faith. I tie it to this lack. I tell you next week. We will take a harvest of miracles of unspeakable breakthroughs. Some of these from this sea tonight, your loved ones will call you people who have forgotten about you. My altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you. Hallelujah. Please lift your seed, everybody. I want to pray. You'll be amazed at what will happen to you and your seed right now. I want to pray. If you believe that I'm a servant of God, I want you to lift your seed. I want to pray. I want to show you the power of seed faith. My Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
let your anointing come upon these seeds that are lifted I pray in the mighty name of Jesus let this seed I let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon your seed let it come upon your seed I tie it to breakthroughs I tie it to breakthroughs my God we have not taught a lie we have not taught cunningly devised fables goodness I provoke by the power of seed faith let sicknesses die I provoke let carryovers end I provoke it took a sacrifice for covenants to be enacted we use this seed to break covenants to break yokes of financial hardship yokes of perpetual suffering yokes of pain yokes of defeat anoint this seed anoint this seed I stretch my hands under this apostolic anointing I stretch my hands let there be financial miracles let there be financial miracles I provoke it right now in the name of the Lord Jehovah whose I am and whom I serve I command those who have forgotten you I command them to call you I command them to bless you I command restoration I break covenants of hardship jobless situations by the power of seed faith I release miracle jobs I terminate barrenness I terminate barrenness my God honor this house honor this house with dramatic testimonies let your Shekinah rest upon this seed let your glory let your glory I command instant harvest in this glory I command harvest supernatural miracles financial miracles for as many that believe for as many that believe let there be shakings in families shakings in businesses shakings in marriages those trusting God for a spouse I pray by that seed every manifestation of spirit husband and spirit wife that stops you from marriage I cause it I cause it I cause it Sacrifice is calling you, oh God. A sacrifice. The Lord is giving people instructions. What you must do to live where you are. A sacrifice. You don't need to know anybody. They that know their God, they shall be strong. A sacrifice. Is calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, ushers, leave the offering baskets. Father, this is not just a gimmick for money. I pray in the name of Jesus that every seed that comes upon this basket, let there be such an anointing that will follow your people teach them through experience the power of seed faith in the name of Jesus go ahead drop your seed and start blasting in tongues drop your seed and start blasting in tongues for the next five minutes 
for the next five minutes for the next five minutes just drop your seed and start blasting in tongues. We are stepping into a new level. Financial dominion by the power of the Holy Ghost. Financial dominion by the power of the Holy Spirit. They be willing and obedient they shall eat the good of the land if they be willing and obedient shake it hallelujah hallelujah now listen hold on i want us to do a quick experiment to show you this works pick this and write three things that you tied your seed to and watch if they come to pass please write it let's do it Ora Roberts was asked before he died what is the greatest lesson you want to teach the body of Christ he says sowing your seed with expectation in your heart because the Bible says the expectation of the righteous don't just sow your seed blindly I want you to write for many of you there are instructions God has given you beyond today but write write three things and say Lord when I gave this seed this was what I tied to it brothers and sisters I've seen this work in my life oh yes I have seen God do fearful things Father, honor these things. Prove to your people that the principle of seed faith is not just a man-made theory to siphon resources out of them. My God, I pray that for many people between now and the miracle service in the name that is above all names, many of you, God will shock you. You will give testimonies your family members will send in testimonies the online community will send in testimonies that will shock you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah very quickly hold on if you are here our time is fast spent but it's worth it we did something tonight that is very prophetic if you are here listening to me and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ salvation is the seed for eternal life you've never given your heart to the Lord or while you heard me speak the Holy Spirit kept convincing you and convicting you along several areas I want to give you an opportunity inside or outside we love you and we are inviting you right now to come and make Jesus Lord of your life it's my pleasure to lead you to make Jesus Lord of your life please appreciate them wherever you are the Holy Ghost is speaking to you you need Jesus you are welcome inside and outside please keep clapping going on motivate them or you've once given your heart to the Lord and you want to rededicate your life to say Lord from today I make up my mind for you please come God bless you God bless you God bless you thank you they are coming appreciate them God bless you sister if there are some of you outside keep coming don't let anybody stop you don't let anybody stop you don't let anybody stop you come hallelujah i see believe there are a few more people outside the holy ghost is convicting you you need to rededicate your heart to the lord don't be ashamed don't be afraid please find your way here very quickly god bless you i see people still coming god bless you thank you for your courage God bless you. Clap for them. Koinonia motivates them. God is bringing them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you for making this decision for Jesus. You will never regret it. You will never regret it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now those of you here, just lift your hands and say after me. If you're still joining them, don't worry. Keep coming. Please lift your hands and say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I repent of my sins 
I believe you died for me. You rose again for me. Wash me with your precious blood. Come and join them. Cleanse me from all my sins. From today, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Empower me to live a victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. Father, bless your people. They came out because they want to honor you. And Lord, I pray that may this seed bring a great harvest in their lives. Use them for your glory. Bless them and empower them. May they carry your glory. And may they do great things for the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please follow the ushers in one minute. The sister waving her hands. Just follow her. She will have your details. God bless you and you'll be back now those outside and inside if this is your first time of worshiping with us we have a prayer and a prophecy and a blessing for you no matter how far you are i want you to find your way right to the front here quickly quickly if you brought anyone welcome them as they come god bless you you're welcome as we prepare to take the announcement in a few minutes we'll be out of this place welcome them you're welcome you're welcome You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. What a great time. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. We celebrate and appreciate every one of you. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We're always here Fridays, but for next week, next week is our miracle service. We have our miracle service the last week of every month. It's an explosive time. Come with your prayer requests. We want to pray for you and prophesy over your life. Hallelujah. As we speak over your life, I assure you that the Lord God of heaven will visit you in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands, saints of God, as we prophesy over their lives. Be blessed, be lifted. Be anointed in the name of Jesus. Whatever challenge you came here with, we pray that the hand of God comes upon you in a mighty way. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God is at work in your life. You are a victor and not a victim. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you with hunger for spiritual things. We bless you with hunger for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray that every kind of carnality will live your life. You will walk in true holiness and righteousness. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord strengthen you. Whatever challenge you came here with, I pray that my God will visit you in very mighty ways. In the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.